good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. This video, I'm going to answer a question that came in actually in a different way from two people, from Sarah and from Kim. Sarah said she wanted her art to have more meaning, but I don't know how. And Kim wrote, I'm not sure what is stopping me from making the art I want to make, except I seem to want, need a why. Is it enough to seek the joy of the zone? So my course is called Find Your Joy. And that might imply that what it's about is about being happy. Just find joy in painting and don't worry about anything else. But there's a very strategic reason why I want you to find joy in making art. And that reason is that that's how we get to our why. That's how we get to the meaning of our work. So what we tend to do when we starting out making our art or many of you coming back to art after a long time away or maybe you're shifting from say representational to abstract or the other way around and you feel like right in this work I'm making there should be a reason for it. it's not enough for me just to enjoy it first I would just ask you to think a little bit about that why isn't it enough for you just to enjoy it why are you not worthy of something that's enjoyable why do you feel there needs to be more there might be some self-worth there, but there might just be the sense that you have a lot to communicate and that art for you is about communication. I know it is for me and you want to get that out and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's brilliant. But what we tend to do when we believe that it's important for our art to have a reason is we intellectualize it. So we start trying to make our brain come up with the reason. What's my art about? Why am I doing this? I wonder what I care about. I wonder what's important. I wonder if I should do political art. I wonder if I should make art about women's issues. It gets very heavy and very thinky. And the answers that you're seeking are not in your brain, in my opinion, or they're not in the part of your brain that's filled with thoughts. They're in a much deeper part of your brain. They're in your intuition. Call it your soul. Call it your spirit. They're deep inside up here, not on the surface where we do all the thinking. And that's why we find our reason for our work as we go. So we start making work. It can be good. It can be bad. It can be indifferent. It doesn't matter. Initially, when we start, it doesn't have meaning and feeling. I think I've spoken about when I first started, I was making representational drawings that looked like what they were supposed to be. And actually, they were of the landscape that I love. And so people were impressed. Oh, that looks like that place. I recognize that tree. I recognize that gatepost or whatever. But for me, I knew that black and white ink drawing I'm doing in no way describes the feeling I have about this landscape, but I couldn't put into words what the feeling was. Once I started to work in the way I'm going to be showing you in the taster course, once I started to work purely from intuition, letting, letting intuition guide, the answers started to come to me about what my work was about. And they came in stages. So at first I thought, oh, it's not about the way the landscape looks. That's why these drawings are not satisfying to me. It's about the way it feels to be in this landscape. And at the time I thought, oh, it's about freedom. It's about the feeling of freedom when you're out in a field or up on the moor and there's no one else around and the wind's blowing and it's just you in nature. It's that feeling that I want to capture. And so for a few years, that's what my art was about. As I worked, your brain is just ticking over as you're working and it started to dawn on me that actually it's not just about that. It's about a connection to my childhood. When I was growing up, I grew up in a village, but not in a scenic, particularly nice area. We would go on our holidays to an area close to where I live now and with very similar topography. And on those holidays, I was free. My cousins were all there too. We'd all go play in the river. We'd get dinghies. We, we were allowed to roam free for the whole day in a way kids are not now. And that freedom to just be myself. And I was quite a tomboy. I wasn't really what I think the way I think my mom and dad would have liked me to be when I was little though my mum and dad are wonderful don't get me wrong but I think they wanted a little girly girl and I wasn't a little girly girl I was loud and bossy and I climbed trees and got into scrapes and played with the boys all the time and 
I always had that feeling that that wasn't right. But when we went on holiday, then I was allowed to do all that stuff and I felt free to do all that stuff. And so for me, it dawned on me that this landscape, it's got layers. Yes, it feels free to be outside with nature, but why does it? It's because back when I was seven, eight, nine and felt out of sorts with the world, in that place, I felt totally in sorts with the world. And that feeling is what I'm trying to convey, which is really a feeling of love and a feeling of connection and a feeling of belonging and a feeling of self-acceptance. So now I've gone from drawing trees and hills to really understanding that my work is about something much different. I'm about to embark moving out of landscape and into something more abstract, which the idea has now come that I'd like to get even deeper into this, these feelings of what it means to be me, what, it, what it's like to be me inside my head, because I think what it's like to be me inside my head is what it's like to be human, which is a connection with everybody else. That sounds very big and grand, but I know what I'm aiming for. But this idea has just come gently as I'm working. It's kind of bubbled up to the surface. So the problem when you need a why is don't let it stop you starting to make art and know that the joy, the things you love to do, the things like I love this landscape. I didn't quite understand why at first, but I knew I loved it. The things you love, that's your key into what your art's going to be about eventually. Even though it might take you, it took me three years to get to that realization and then another two years to get to this new realization of what I want to communicate next. So it comes through the work and that's why when you say, Kim, is it enough to seek the joy of the zone? For some people, it's enough to just seek the joy because art is a hobby. That's what they want to do. They want to feel good. It makes them feel really great. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you feel like you need more, I just want to reassure you that finding the joy of the zone is what gets you to the place you want to get to. Because when you love the things you're doing and you're inspired to get to your workspace and start again because it's fun, then you go back over and over again. And it's the going back over and over again that allows these ideas and thoughts to come through. When you try and force yourself to do something heavy and important and when you put weight on what you're doing, that stops you wanting to go in and do it. And then you will never get to the idea that is inside you. You have a unique combination of life experience and genetics and personality traits. And those things have created some things that you will want to say in your art. We just don't know what it is yet, but it will come. And the process I'm going to teach you in May that's where it's going to come from. So I'm really looking forward to it. In the meantime, watch out for more of these videos as I answer more questions. I hope that helped Kim and Sarah and anybody else who feels this way. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.